You're about to listen to another inspiring word from House on the Rock Church, the London Lighthouse. For more information and interaction with House on the Rock, please visit our website on hotr.org.uk. Hello fam, it was a great service this morning as we delved deeper in our journey of audacious faith. We started to get into the mechanics of exactly how faith really works. I can't wait for you to hear this message. Thank you for being on this our official YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe right away and turn the notifications on so you know whenever it is that we are live. I also want to encourage you to support us to get this good and great work done. The various ways in which you can give are now showing on the screen. But as usual, I'm in a rush to get out of your face so that you can be blessed by the message. See you after the message. Hallelujah. Let's rise up for the reading of God's word. And the text that we are going to is Romans chapter 4, verse 16 to 22. Romans chapter 4, 16 to 22. Two. Woo! Vabakosha the Adas. I read in your hearing. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed so that he could become the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that, that what he had promised, he was also able to perform, and therefore it was accounted to him, to who? To Abraham for righteousness. I I would benefit from some credit in my account round about now. I don't know about you. I would love to get some uh, notification that my account has been positively credited. Now this text says that Abraham's faith was credited to his account as righteousness. His faith was credited to him as righteousness. While others were trying to credit their accounts with their own efforts, works of the law, Abraham credited his accounts with faith. And it was accounted. When the accounting report came out, it says, righteous. (laughs) You see, Abraham is called our father of faith um, because of his example of faith against all odds. Which hundred-year-old man with... A wife that's 90 or that has never conceived before has the faith to believe that God's promise will still come to pass. Abraham, he's our father of faith. He's not our father of faith because he was faultless. In fact, When I read the text we just read about Abraham, where it says that he did not waver, he was strong, he was this, he was that, I try, I I struggle to reconcile that account of Abraham with the account I read in the book of Genesis. 
Because is this not the same Abraham that lied to the king of uh, Egypt? Or is it not the same Abraham that went into Hagar and had Ishmael? And yet when God would report about Abraham in Romans in chapter 4, there is no record of his misdeeds, only record of his faith deeds, because faith was credited to his account as righteousness. Is anybody hearing me what I'm saying? Because what pleases God is faith. God was so pleased with his faith that when he would report on Abraham, he would only give him a good report. Can I announce to somebody that God is about to give you a good report? I know you messed up in your past and you did things you were not supposed to do. But if you will believe him, he will rewrite your history. Somebody's history is about to be rewritten. If you believe me what I'm saying, come and shout, yeah. yeah. Please stay standing with me for a few more moments. Um, I know most of the ladies today, because it's Sunday, aren't wearing heels, so you should be able to stand. God bless you. Amen and amen. When I look at that text, I see a little bit more. I see that this report about Abraham becomes a template of how to walk in audacious faith. And very quickly, and this might be a word for somebody that somebody really needs to hear this Sunday morning. From Abraham's example, we see six things that are important for you to walk in audacious faith. The kind of faith that Abraham walked in. Number one, you must have hope. Tell your neighbor you've got to have hope. Because hope is the focus of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. You've got to have hope. You've got to keep hope alive. Tell somebody else, keep hope alive. Number two, he said that he, he was convinced that he had promised. So you must have a word from God. He remembered the word that said you'll be a father of many nations. So you've got to have a word from God. What did God say to you? Number three, you have to be deliberate about what you choose to consider and what you choose not to consider. Because he said he considered not. So you have to be very deliberate about what you're choosing to consider and what you're choosing not to, to consider. Number four, you have to refuse unbelief. Because unbelief will come, but you have to refuse it. Number five, you need to learn how to give God glory even before the delivery of what you are believing him for. And number six, listen to this, you have to be convinced that he has promised, number one, number two, that he is able, and number three, that he will do it. Oh my goodness. You've got to be convinced that he promised it. You've got to find the title deed in the word where he promised that thing. Then you've got to believe in his ability to do it. Most of us don't have a problem with that. We know he's able to do all things. We love the song. But you've got to go beyond that and you've got to believe that he will do it. I came to tell somebody this Sunday morning that he will do it. However, that template is not the focus of my teaching this Sunday morning. The focus of my teaching is actually in the, ex on, in the example of God himself. When talking about himself, he said that he is the God that calls those things that do not exist as though they did. Our God is a faith God that calls those things that be not as though they were. So faith speaks. Faith is never silent. Faith speaks. Faith calls things. Second Corinthians 4 and verse 13 says, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I have believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. There is a spirit of faith and it is not a silent spirit. It is evidenced by speech. Your words reveal your faith. No words, no faith. So as I start to teach you on faith mechanics of how faith works today, I want to really focus on what faith says. The subject of my meditation, I used to call it speaking faith, uh, but now I'm turning it around, I'm saying speak up. Tell your neighbor, speak up. It's time to speak up. If you've got faith, it's time for you to speak up. 
Now, and in my colloquial language, we call it Soros, okay. Uh -huh, yes, 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 yes. So whichever language you prefer this Sunday morning, walk to your neighbor or somebody around you and either tell them, speak up, or tell them, Soros, okay, Soros, okay. It's time for you to speak up for what you believe in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty Father, speak through me like only you can today. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let the spirit of faith be released in this house like never before in Jesus' name. And the people said amen. amen. And as you take your seat, say speak up, speak up, speak up. Hallelujah. Faith speaks. I'm not going to take, take too much time emphasizing the imperative of faith. I will say a little bit about it. I think that last week Sunday I did enough to convince you on the imperative, the importance, the uh, critical need for faith. Nothing in the kingdom of God works without faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is the receiver while God is the giver. God gives, but the only way you receive from God is by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things uh, um, not yet seen. The just shall live by faith. There's no other way for the believer to live but by faith. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35 says, therefore do not cast away your confidence which has great reward. Confidence there is a synonym for faith. He's saying don't cast away your faith because it's going to bring reward. Reward is coming your way. Uh, the person that grabbed it just said amen. I said reward is coming your way. Faith brings with it reward. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even what? Our faith. Uh, faith is so critical that this becomes the object of Satan's attack against our lives. When Jesus knew he was going to the cross, he says to Simon in Luke chapter 2 and verse 31 to 32, he says, Simon, Simon, indeed, the Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. But when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Listen, uh, G Jesus is saying that Satan wants to deal with you. I've prayed for you. I didn't pray that you wouldn't go through. I didn't pray that the enemy wouldn't attack you. I didn't even pray that you would not deny me. What I prayed was that you would not lose your faith because the most vital thing in your life Life is faith. And then he goes on and says that when, he didn't say if, he knew that if you keep your faith, you're going to make a comeback. I came to tell somebody you're going to make a comeback. As long as you have faith, whatever you lost, you are going to be able to recreate it because faith is substance, the substance of things hoped for. Therefore, I've prioritized faith to the point where you can take anything away from me, but I'm not going to let go of my faith. Because as long as I have my faith, whatever you take from me, I'm going to recreate bigger and better. If you believe it, come and shout amen. Don't let go of your faith. In fact, let me tell you something. That Satan's attack against your life is not for your house, is not for your money, is not for your honey. His attack against your life is actually to undermine your faith because he knows that if he can get your faith, he just got your victory, he just got your strength, he just got your next and greater tomorrow. I'm not going to let go of my faith. Can somebody shout that? I'm not going to let go of my faith. It is therefore vital that we protect our faith. It is indispensable that we understand how faith works because it will work if we work it. I'm teaching on the mechanics of faith, how faith works. This is critical to me because I find that we live in a day, and particularly in Christian, Christendom, where faith is so commonly used. We mention it all the time. And we'll be shocked how many believers don't really understand how to move, work, and operate in faith. So this is essential teaching for you so that you stop having the, 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 the hit and miss experience of 
of walking in faith. Uh, so let's, let's go further. How does faith come? Now we quickly jump to Romans in chapter 10 and verse 17 where it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and that is great. But let's read the verses that precede it. So in Romans and chapter 10, I now read from verse 14. It says, how shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they be sent? Okay, then jump to verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, we need to interpret scripture in context. So if you understand the larger context of Romans and chapter 10, you'll find that Paul was talking about how God has made his grace abundantly available to everybody, whether you are Jew or Greek, tall or short, black or white. He has made his grace available to all, and he would not reject anyone that calls upon his name, that if you call upon his name, he will respond. He is guaranteed to respond. He is faithful to respond. But then he tells us, how would you call on his name if you've never believed in him? Now, how are you going to believe in him if you've never heard him? Now, how are you going to hear him unless there's somebody preaching, somebody speaking about him, okay, and how will they speak about him unless they have been sent? Well, I came to tell somebody this Sunday morning, I'm not a went one, I'm a sent one. Hey, uh, you see, because somebody that is sent has the backing of who sent him. Uh, God sent me this Sunday morning to preach this word to you. Uh, but what I want you to see uh, is that the preacher that is sent, uh, when when he comes, he preaches, and when he preaches, you hear, and when you hear, you believe. It produces faith within you, and then you are about to enter into the performance of your faith. So we start to see how critical it is for the preacher to connect with the hearer. Are there any hearers under the sound of my voice? Are you a hearer under the sound of my voice? Come and shout yes. Can I have one hera? One, one hera. Just quickly come, quickly come. Quickly come. One hera, one hera. Thank you. That, that, that's, that's a hera that's ready to receive faith. Hallelujah. Now, this is what the scripture is showing us, that the preacher comes with the word. He preaches the word. The hera hears, and it produces faith, and faith produces victory, okay? And so, the enemy's strategy, therefore, is to keep the hera away from the preacher, because as long as there are uh, uh, degrees of separation between the preacher and the hearer, faith will not be produced. So Satan is en employs many strategies uh, to create distance uh, between the preacher and the hearer. Okay, uh, that, 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 that when, when um, the, the bedside assembly and, and, and Pastor Pillow is saying don't go to church is actually a demonic strategy to stop the preacher and the hearer from getting together. Is anybody hear me what I'm saying? When the enemy engineers offense in your life to cause you to no longer come to where the preacher is preaching, it's a demonic strategy to keep the hearer away from the preacher. But that devil is a liar. We refuse any degrees of separation. The hearer and the preacher are going to get together and faith is going to be produced. If you agree with me, come and shout, yeah! Yes. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. So we therefore see that all of that was the premise for him concluding that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's present continuous. It's not just faith comes by having heard. It comes by constantly hearing the word of God. Now you must understand that the word of God here is not just talking about any word of God. When you go and under, interpret it correctly, it's talking about the word of Christ. 
the word of Christ, the, wo- the finished work. When I, I don't have the time to start going into the Greek uh, and the Hebrew background to that. So he said, when you hear the correct word of Christ, when you hear the correct exegesis, revelation of the finished work, it will produce faith within you. It's not just any word. It's not just pick any verse and it's going to produce faith. No, it's about a right revelation, accurate interpretation of God's word that produces faith. And this is one of my own apostolic assignments right from my youth. When I could discern the call of God, he said to me, wherever you go, wherever you speak, faith shall come. Can I tell somebody faith has just invaded this place? Faith is, is growing in your heart, even right now. We read the, the story in the book of Acts and chapter 14, verse 8 to 9, where Paul was preaching and teaching somewhere. And he tells us that there was a man that was crippled from his mother's womb that sat down and heard what Paul was preaching. He heard. Now, to the, to the, to the natural eye, you couldn't see what was going on, but according to our understanding now, we knew what was going on. What was going on is that as Paul was preaching, uh, uh, faith comes by hearing, faith was coming. Uh, Somebody say, faith is coming, faith is coming, faith is coming. As he was preaching, uh, faith was coming. It was rising in the heart of this man. Uh, So much so uh, that Paul, in the midst of his preaching, looked uh, and intently watched the guy and could see something in his eyes. Uh, Do you know what he saw in his eyes? He saw faith. He saw faith. uh, And then he interrupted his homily and said, discerning that the man now had faith to be healed. (laughs) He said, rise and walk. And the man that had been lame from his mother's womb leaped and started to work. I came to prophesy to somebody where you were lame before, you are about to start to walk. Where you were crippled before, you are about to receive strength. A supernatural turnaround is coming in your life. If you believe it, come and shout, yeah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You see, the, 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 the scripture says earlier on in that same Romans chapter 10, in verse 10, it says, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So there has to be a heart-mouth connection. Hello? There has to be a heart-mouth connection. And the the, the place where faith is produced is actually in your heart. Hallelujah. So the heart becomes the heart of the matter. The location of faith is in your heart. You believe in your heart and you speak with your mouth. Getting a little bit ahead of myself, but it's all right. Uh, We therefore know why the scripture now tells us in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 that keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life, okay? The New Living Translation says it this way. Guard your heart. Somebody say guard. Guard your heart uh, above all else. Listen to what it says. For it determines the course of your life. Your heart determines the course of your life. And your heart is the production center of faith. So you have to guard your heart. You have to guard what's getting into your heart. Because what's getting into your heart is either going to be producing faith or it's going to be producing fear. So therefore, I have to employ guards upon the various gateways to my heart. Hello? Now, what are the normal and natural gateways to your heart? The natural and normal gateways to your heart are your five senses, okay? Uh, Therefore, what you hear, what you see, what you smell or discern, okay? And even your mouth is a gateway to your heart because as you speak, you hear again. It becomes a dynamo, a cycle. Uh, Yes, and what you eat through your mouth somehow will impact your heart. 
and then your feelings. All of these are the gateways to your heart. Okay, so now I have to set guards of, upon those gateways to be very intentional about what I am letting through those gateways to get into my heart because it, once it enters my heart, it starts to produce something. It's either producing faith or it's producing fear. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? I cannot be lackadaisical and just allow anything access to my heart. I can't allow anybody have access to my heart. I've got to control access. I've got to put checks and balances as to how or who gains access to my heart. My heart determines the very course of my life. Determines the very course of my life. So I'm guarding my heart jealously. I'm careful about what I allow in to my heart. There are some things that I need to turn away at the gates. At the gates. I just mm -mm, go back. You are not coming in here. And there are some certain things that I open up. I say, come in, come in, come in. Come and dine in this place. Is anybody hearing me what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Faith comes by constantly allowing what builds faith past the gates into your heart. This is how faith comes. So now we understand how faith comes. And we could, we could do series on, on just how faith comes. But we've got to now go to the next level because we've got to know how faith goes. We, we know how faith comes. Now we've got to understand how faith goes to work. Uh, you, you've mastered how faith is coming in, but how is faith going out to produce what you are believing for? How does faith go to work? I know how it comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, by making sure that uh, words of faith, the word of God is entering through every um, conceivable gate to my heart. It's producing faith in my heart. But then how does the faith in my heart, how does it go to work? Romans 4.23, he said that guard your heart. Out of it flow the issues or the control or the course of your life. How does it, how, what, what comes out of my heart that starts to determine the course of my life? Am I with anybody? Are you with me? Are you with me? How does faith go to work? It brings us to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13, where it says, we believed, therefore we spoke. We believe, therefore we speak. So faith speaks. So I tell you that faith goes to work by the speaking of it. The way the faith in your heart gets out to start to produce is by the speaking of it. And we see the example right from the beginning. Right from the beginning, when God faces a situ situation of confusion, voidness, and all of that, what does God do? God said, and God said. He spoke to it. When he now creates Adam and places Adam in a garden, he also t starts to teach him the power of speaking when he brings all those animals to Adam and says, whatsoever you call them, that's what they're going to be. Uh, we don't know how many hundreds of thousands of animals Adam would have had to name in that day, but it wasn't just a casual naming, it was a training. It wasn't just naming, it was training. He was teaching Adam that the way you create is with words of faith that you speak out of your mouth. So the worlds are, are not formed of the things that we see. They are formed by the things that we don't see. And what we do not see that forms the world is words. This is why tongue, tongues are critical. That's why the scripture says that no weapon that is fashioned or formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment we shall condemn. Because tongues are critical. They are powerful indeed. James chapter 3 tells us how powerful tongues are. What are tongues producing? They are producing what? There's a mystery inside here. Whew. We talk about the breath of life. But how is the breath of life really expressed? It's expressed in words. It's expressed in words. You know that if, you t if they take away your breath, what happens? 
Apart from dying, you can't talk. The first thing that happens if you're gasping for hair is what? You lose the ability to release words. Even in those bad dreams you have, that devil is a liar. What happens? Something is pressing you. Eh? That devil is a liar. Nothing is pressing you in Jesus' name. And then what is happening? You can't say. You can't say. <laughs> and as long as you can't say anything, you, are, you seem powerless. Am I talking to anybody? But then somewhere in the midst of that nightmare, you find a breakthrough. And you say, Jesus. And immediately you release the word. What happens? <laughs> Now, now, I could medically and psychosomatically explain what is happening to you and say, oh, it's, it's a matter of physiology. But we know that man is more than physiology. There's a spiritual dimension to a lot of the things that we see and experience. If you believe me what I'm saying, come and shout, yeah! Faith goes to work by speaking. Words set things in motion. Uh, so you have to become very, very deliberate about the words that you allow out of your mouth. You have to be very, very deliberate, very choicy about what you say and what you don't say. I'm just being real. Right? We love that one. When you say something you know you're not supposed to say, you say, I'm just being real. <laughs> you have to be, that, and I'm not opposed to you being real, and I'm going to explain that in a few moments' time. But we've got to get to the place where we, are, we choose our words. In fact, when I studied the Word of God, I find out that quite a, few number, uh, quite a number of scriptures, uh, when you read in the uh, uh, King James translation, uses the word profession. It says, having processed a good um, profession before many witnesses, 1 Timothy 6.12, Hebrews 3 and 1 says, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, okay? Hebrews 4, 14 says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, in the King James translation. Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. But then when you read it in the New King James translation, and other translations, the word that is translated profession in King James is translated confession. Because the Greek word that's translated in, in, both, in all these translations can mean either profession or confession. It's actually the word homologia, which means to say the same thing. But I find it instructive that the translations are using both or either the word profession or confession. Help me ask your neighbor, what is a profession? Or ask your other neighbor, what is your profession? Typically, your profession is what you do for a living. is what you do in exchange for the life that you lead, for the resources to live the life that you live. So a teacher's profession is teaching. He teaches to be able to live. A doctor's profession is doctoring. <laughs> Practicing medicine, if you like. So your profession is what you do for a living. Now, the scripture says the believer's life, the believer's faith is profession. And that word profession is also rightly interpreted confession. Can I suggest to you that as a believer, your profession is your confession? What you do for a living as a believer is what you say. For life and death are in the power of the tongue, and he shall eat of it. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? What you say, your confession, 
is your profession. It is what you eat. So you have to become very deliberate and choicy about what you say. And when you, 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 you see that word that was translated confession or profession, homologia, it, it, it's quite powerful because it means acknowledgement, it means assent, it means covenant, agreement. Uh, so therefore, what he's saying is that there has to be an agreement between what's going on in your heart and what's coming out of your mouth. There has to be an agreement between what's going on in your heart and what's coming out of your mouth. I wish I had time. Next week, we'll, cl we'll close it down. We'll round it up. There has to be an agreement. The problem with a whole lot of believers is that there is a discord between what's, what they say they believe in their heart and what's coming out of their mouth. There's no alignment. There's no agreement between what's going on in their heart and what they're saying out of their mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> we give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Faith goes to work by the speaking of it. Tell your neighbor, speak up. Oh, you need to say it with a little bit more attitude. Tell your neighbor, speak up, speak up, speak up. You've been silent too long. You've been quiet too long. It's time for you to speak up. You've got power in you, and it's only released through your speaking. Tell your neighbor one more time, speak up. Speak up, speak up. Hallelujah. But this is where we really need to go. What does faith speak? Back to our pilot text, and particularly the area that is of great interest to me. God, our faith God, our primary example even before Abraham, who calls life out of death, who calls those things that do not exist, as if they are, or as if they did. This is what faith speaks. Forgive my background, I love the original King James translation. I know all of you, or a good number of you, are now in the more modern translations. But I would always counsel you, make sure you still have the new King James translation as a backbone so that the other translations are embellishments. As far as I'm concerned, it's still the closest to the original accurate interpretations or translations of God's word. The original authorized King James translation says, who calleth those things that be not as though they were? It does not call those things that be as though they were not. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. yep. Faith does not see this chair and say, it's not there. He calleth those things that be not as though they were. Not those things that be as though they were not. So faith does not deny the existence and the presence of this chair. Faith is always calling something that is not yet here that is not apparent, that does not exist, and calling it into existence. This is critical to understand. This difference will liberate you. Because there's a lot of speaking you have been doing that you have been calling faith that isn't faith, that is actually denial. 
Oh, there's no chair here. There's no chair. Uh-uh. Is there a chair here? There's no chair. There's no chair. There's no chair. There's no chair in this place. I can say it from morning till night till I'm blue in the face. The chair is there. Are you with me? That's not faith. That's at best denial. At worst, you're lying. There's a lot of lying going on that we are calling faith. Hello. And I know, you know, we get, we get trapped in religion. Get trapped in religion. So you are having symptoms. You have a headache, a backache, a legache. Your stomach is upset. You understand what I'm talking about? Say, I ask you how you are. What do you say? I'm fine. Liar. <laughs> you are not, it's not necessarily a lie, but listen closely to me. Understand what I'm telling you. I am not sick. I don't have a headache. My enemy has a headache. <laughs> <laughs> My enemy is running fever. <laughs> I, I smile, I laugh when I hear these things because I know it's a struggle to live by faith. It's an attempt to be aligned with a lot of faith messages that we have heard that because we don't understand, we're actually walking more in denial than we are in faith. In fact, we take it to the extreme. Where, remember this song, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich, which is actually directly taken from scriptures. Then we have reformed it and say, I say I am rich. I say, I, I declare I am strong. Because we do not want to in any way identify with the negative. But the scripture didn't have any problem with, with admitting he just said, don't, don't stay in the weakness. Don't keep on repeating, I am weak. He says, start calling something else into being. When you are weak, what is absent? Strength. So what does faith do? Faith calls what is absent to come and be present. Your teacher comes to class. Well, I don't know whether you guys went to that kind of school, but some of us went to that type of school where the first thing they do in the morning is that they do a roll call and they call the names. And then when you call the names, when they get to your name, what do you do? You say, present. I came to announce to somebody this Sunday morning, I don't know what has been absent in your life, but when you call by faith, it's going to answer present. Somebody shout present! Faith is not denial. You are broke. You are broke. Stop telling me you are not broke. Let me try to really get you to see this. Faith hardly engages in negative speech. Faith hardly engages in negative sleep, speech or denial. So even though I'm broke, faith is not going to say I am not broke. Faith is going to say I am rich. rich. Because when you are broke, what is absent? Riches. Riches, money, supply. So faith calls what is absent to become present. So now I have to audit my words and what I speak. I am I'm in no way desirous to walk in denial. I want to walk in genuine faith. I might not want to tell you that I have a headache, body pains, and everything, but I'm also not, I'm not going to say I do not have it. Because presently, I, I have real symptoms. I'm being real. <laughs> But if I'm going to speak faith, it's not to deny the present experience, 
is to call what is absent, what does not exist, is to call it into being. Okay. Can somebody help me? Um, who? Tammy, please, quick, quickly come. Help me. Can I have the microphone? Let me use that microphone. Or, or anybody else, somebody else to also help apart from Tammy. You are believing God for something or there's a particular situation or whatever that you just saw. The, okay. <laughs> the old church wants to come. <laughs> All right. I've got to some people going here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just think about one thing that you want or that you are believing God for or whatever, that you are willing to share. Willing to share? Yeah. Okay. Say it out loud? Yeah, 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 sure. Into the microphone. Breakthrough in your breath. So, what? How are you going to? How are you going to faith talk about that? That's number one. Brilliant! Come on, let's put our hands together. I want to, I want to, I want to look for, thank you so much, you can, you can be seated, and I th she was right, but I want, I want us to really get it, and I, I want you, even as I'm going through trying to do this, I want you to start thinking about your own particular situation or circumstance, and start say, what's faith talk as regards this, yeah? Talk to us. What, what are you believing God for? Or promotion, what, promotion in my career. Promotion in your career. So um, if I were to ask you um, that are you enjoying your career? At the moment, yes. At the moment, yes. Uh, so how are you going to speak about that promotion in your career? Um... How are you going to call it forth? <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> no, but oh, yeah. this, this is it. This is it. And, and I'm happy you are thinking. And you see, too many of us are not thinking. We just go with the, with the bandwagon. You call forth the promotion. What? Okay, this is the equation. What is and what do you want that is not? Right now you have a job, right? Mm -hmm. Good job, it's okay, yeah. it's doing, doing all right. Then you now want to call forth the promotion. So it's not about denying where you are, it's about calling forth what you want that isn't next existed step, yet. So level. what do you start calling for promotion? Yeah, you start step. calling forth promotion. You start calling forth promotion. I call for promotion. I will be promoted. Promotion is mine. Promotion cometh to me. Promotion is my portion. I'm not even going to so much say too much of I am promoted, particularly to my brothers and my sisters around me. Why? Because I am not yet promoted. <laughs> they my might stop praying for me. <laughs> my enemy is not promoted. <laughs> my enemy is not promoted, you see. <laughs> my enemy is not promoted. I'm going to call it forth. I call forth my promotion. I call forth my promotion. It's just like, the, the, thank you so much. It's also the rom romance that we have, the romance that we have around the world, the word, it is well. We are in love with it. Charismatic Christendom. We love it is well. Everything, it is well. And I have no problem with it because I'm in love with it too. I say it is well, a whole lot, yeah? I'm a calm person. You give, bring me bad report, my first response is it is well. It has become part of my psychological makeup to handle my internal environment, to calm, calm down forms, uh, storms. First thing, it is well. But there's a lot of it is well that is not well. <laughs> there's a lot of... It, it, there is a lot of it is well that is not well. Let's, let's, let's say that is as it is. Somebody is bereaved and you want to give comfort and you go and you start saying it is well. 
Have you been there? It's only self-control that stops sometimes the bereaved person from, from getting up and wasting you. Do you know what wasting? <laughs> what do you mean it is? Where I am now, the way I feel right now, it is not where. But it's a transient moment. It's where the person is at that moment. I'm taking a sidestep, but let me quickly t take the sidestep because I, I think it's an important sidestep, particularly when dealing with bereavement and loss. You don't have to say anything. I, as believers, we feel under pressure that we've got to say. So we come and start saying rubbish. Sometimes all you need is presence. I'm here for you. Yeah? And let the bereaved lead. Yeah? So, our romance with it is well because of our understanding of, of faith. No problem with it. No problem with it as well. But I have now found myself more than not saying it is well and it shall be well. Hello? Anybody that works, works with me a lot and that I converse with will find me now adding that it shall be well to my it is well. Because in the it shall be well, I think that is a more, a more accurate capture of faith speech. It is, it is admitting that there's a degree of wellness that I have not arrived at yet. I'm not denying that it is well spiritually right now, but maybe psychologically, emotionally, and otherwise, it is not well. So it shall be well. There is coming an alignment between the wellness in my spirit and the wellness in my situation. So it is well, but it shall be well. Oh, I am saved, but I will be saved. Oh, my. I am delivered, but I will be delivered. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual and supernatural reality, but there is a process for its manifestation in the natural. And I'm not going to truncate that process by poor faith speech or denial masked as faith speech. So now let me try to finally give you the definition. So real faith does not deny reality. Real faith chooses to embrace an alternative supernatural reality and call that reality out of the realm of the invis invisible, things not seen, into the realm visible. Did you get it? Real faith does not deny what is going on now. There's unrest, there's pain, there's sickness, there's death. There's whatever it is that's negative that's going on. It doesn't deny that reality. In fact, it's that reality that necessitated the faith. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? So real faith doesn't deny this reality. Real faith stretches its hand out of the realm of the natural into the realm spiritual and supernatural and lays hold on the thing that I need that is not yet seen and grabs it by the scruff of the neck and calls it to come out of the realm supernatural and spiritual into the realm natural. Uh, 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 and in a few moments' time when we're rounding up this prayer, you are are going to have this this message it's prayer um, you are going to have the opportunity to call forth what you need hallelujah in fact the scripture is kaleo call it forth what you do not see speaking is the primary expression of faith is the primary way, way that faith goes to work, but it is not the solitary way that faith goes to work because faith without works is dead. So 
faith, one of the works of faith is the speech, but more than the speech, there's also the actions that you need to take. Time forbids we're not going there today. Next week, Sunday, we'll start talking about the acts of faith, what faith does. We're talking now heavily on what faith says, what faith speaks. Faith speaks up, and it speaks up the right things. It calls for the right thing. But then there are actions to be taken because, again, a missing link in the equation that I've seen with believers is that some believers have been taught confession very well. So they confess morning, afternoon, night, and they do nothing. Okay, so Philip is believing God for promotion and he's calling for the promotion, but he's not upskilling, he's not learning anything, he's not joining the right forums, he's not um, um, building relationship with, with key persons you are, I'm just using it as an illustration, <laughs> with key persons in the organization, he's not preparing for his evaluation, and meanwhile, he's speaking. Promotion, I call you for. Promotion, you come now. Promotion, you are mine. There's a lack of alignment between what you are believing in your heart, what you are saying with your mouth, and what you are doing. There has to be an alignment. I believe, I speak, I do. I believe, I speak, I do. I believe, I speak, I do. So we start in walking into the mechanics of the, the, the actions, the acts of faith. What does faith do? What are the actions that faith does that finally produces the result? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Speak up. Tell your neighbor, speak up. Tell your neighbor, let your faith speak. Faith is not silent, faith speaks. Faith is not silent, faith speaks. Faith has to speak. Jesus was entering into Jerusalem and he sees a fig tree that's looking like it has fruit. But when it gets close enough, there are no fruit on it. And Jesus answered it, the scripture says. Jesus answered it. Uh, you only answer when you are spoken to. Uh, so the fig tree was speaking. Uh, your situation is speaking to you. Uh, your circumstance is speaking to you. That problem is speaking to you. Uh, and you've got to answer it because you must realize that silence means consent. So you've got to open your mouth and you've got to speak to it. Somebody say, speak up. Speak up. Your bank account speaking to you. You've got to answer it. You've got to speak up. Your symptoms speaking to you. You've got to answer it. You've got to speak up and start to call forth that which you want that is not yet apparent. Somebody shout, speak up. The fig tree spoke to Jesus and Jesus answered it and said, no one eat fruit of you ever again. The next day they were passing by and the fig tree had dried up from the roots. Somebody is about to have a 24-hour miracle by reason of your speaking up in the mighty name of Jesus. You are about to call out of the realm supernatural and spiritual that which you need and it will appear in your space, uh, in your time, in your season, somebody shout, speak up. You've got to call forth uh, what you want uh, to see. Uh, we are life-giving spirits, not just living souls. As much as living souls are also speaking spirits. Uh, under the new covenant, we are life-giving. And the way we give life is by the words of our mouth. Uh, it's time for us uh, to open up our mouths uh, and speak uh, up. Uh, did you hear me what I'm saying? A closed mouth is a closed destiny. I don't know what it is that you need. I don't know what it is that you want. But it's time for you to speak up and call it into being. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody shout, yeah! Speak up. Speak up. Speak up. Speak up. Don't be silent no longer. Silent no more. Speak up. 
speak up, call forth what you need, call forth what you, you want. In fact, you've got to become, it might become routine with you, where in the morning you take time, time out to release words, to release words, to speak words. You see, some people, some people even outside their faith have, have queued in to, to, to what we're talking about. Now there's such a rise of affirmations and uh, manifestation and all that, and they're saying all of these things without Christ. But we understand that the roots are in Christ, and we speak it from that premise, hallelujah. You wake up in the morning and you speak certain things. I am favored. I am blessed. All things are working together for my good. Ah, resources are finding their way to me. I'm making the right decisions. I'm making the right choices. I have speed. You see, I'm not saying the negative. I'm calling forth what I need. Speak up! Speak up. Speak up. Speak up. Everything answers to words, ultimately. Hallelujah. Woo! Money answers for all things, but money also answers to words. Speak up. Call forth the money you need to come unto you from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. May my faith be credited to my account as righteousness. Speak up. Woo! We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. I said I'm going to give you an opportunity to call forth whatever it is you need. I hope that in the course of this teaching, a lot has crystallized for you and you're starting to see the things that you desire, the things that you need. Now remember also what I had taught you and part of the template. You've got to get a word for it. Just like Abraham, he, wa he was convinced that God had promised, so he had a word for it. <laughs> it's almost like, if I can get him to say it, hello, if I can get him to say it, that's it. Too. All I need is to get him to say it because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. If he has said it, he will bring it to pass. If he has spoken it, he will make it good. God is so much not a liar that even if he were to tell a lie, immediately it comes out of his mouth, it will cease to be a lie, it will become the truth. Oh Lord, are you hearing me what I'm saying? So if I can just get him to say it, or if I can find where he said it, that's all I need. So once I can find that he has said it, then I have a premise for my faith, I can now call it into being. What is, it, what, it, what is it that you need? What is it that you want? Is, do you have a word for it? Do you have a title deed for it? Do you have a reference that, okay, Lord, this, 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 this. Sometimes what testimony does in you is that it lets you see God moving in somebody else's house, to, a life to stimulate faith in your own life. But what you also need to be listening to in any testimony is, where's the word? Where's the word? Where's the word? Because that's the real trigger. That's the real production center for faith. What promise of God's word do you have? Somebody has homework to do today. Somebody has to go back home today and go and start searching the scripture for the verses, for the words that speak to your need. And then you start to speak it. You start to call it forth. So in the next two, three minutes, let's rise up to our feet. And I don't know what your peculiar or particular situation is, but I want you to start to speak faith. I want you to start to call it forth. I want you to start calling that thing, is it money, is it health, is it strength, is it direction, is it wisdom, is it knowledge, is it understanding, is it relationship, is it love, is it joy? What is it that is absent, that is not present in your life? It's time for you to call it forth, call it into being. Call it into your space now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, come on. You are a living spirit, a life-giving spirit. Uh, through the finished work of Christ Jesus, you have great power in you that has, been, uh, uh, has, has not been tapped. It's time to tap through it. Faith comes by hearing, but faith goes to work 
by the speaking of it. You've got to speak it. You've got to call it forth. Come on, release your faith right now with the words of your mouth. Release your faith right now with the words of your mouth. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm calling forth that new job. I'm calling forth that open door. I'm calling forth unprecedented favor. I'm calling forth breakthrough and great liftings. What is it that you need? I'm calling forth for renewed strength. I'm calling forth for great healings, joy, miracles, signs, and wonders. I'm calling them forth even right now. My new level, my new dimension. I'm calling it forth in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking our faith right now in Jesus' name. Radabaka doso manda rekelele bolo boso naria redele boso kamba rebeko so ya rekele ya call it forth I call it forth I call it forth peace I call you forth peace to every raging storm I speak right now I release right now I proclaim right now in the name of Jesus I call it forth rakabala do bobo godly relationships. Great blessings. I call them forth now in the name of Jesus. Hey, Radada Bacabosa. Hey, Socombria la Balabosha. Rekelia Bosoma. Hades. Hades. Thank you, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sakabuta shi Hades. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you. Father, we give you the glory. Father, we give you the honor. Whew. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Lord, we now call forth those unseen things. We call forth those things that we hope for. We call them into being. And I decree and declare that not many days hence, they manifest in your life. They manifest in your situations. They manifest in your circumstances. In the mighty name of Jesus, there is a supernatural turnaround. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Somebody go ahead and give God the praise right now. Come on, go ahead and give him the glory. Lift up his holy name. Hallelujah. Lift up his holy name. Lift up his holy name. Come on, you can do better than that. If you know you have what you have believed for, come on, give him the praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. It would be remiss of me not to give an opportunity for somebody that is not saved or that is backslidden if I don't give them the opportunity to get in alignment with God once again. So we may be seated, heads bowed and eyes closed. If you are here or online and you have not yet surrendered your life to Christ Jesus and you want to do so right now, or you know that you've strayed away because of disappointment or because of failure and you want to come back into proper relationship with God now, please repeat these words of prayer after me as the congregation supports us. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you did. Thank you for the finished work. Today, I repent of my sin and I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe with my heart and I make this confession with the words of my mouth. Therefore, by faith, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Somebody give God the praise. If you pray that prayer, you are indeed a new creation. You are born again, but we want to help you grow from being a child to becoming a son of God, mature in God. Hallelujah. So, would like you... <laughs> We'd like you to please directly con 
um, connect with us on any of our platforms. Send us an email. Follow the pathway on our website so that we can help you to grow and become um, a mature son in Christ Jesus. Hey fam, were you blessed by that word? I want to believe that you were and that you're starting to audit your wardrobe. Your words matter. Faith is never silent. Faith speaks. So you've got to speak to create the world that you desire. Uh, thank you for being on this, or our official YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe right away and turn the notifications on so you know whenever it is that we are live. And the various ways in which you can support us are now showing on the screen. Please choose the way that's most preferred by you. Till next time, God bless you. We hope you've enjoyed this uplifting sermon from House on the Rock Church, the London Lighthouse. We hope you've been informed and inspired. Join us for services every Wednesday and Sunday. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at HOTR London. Also, live stream our services on YouTube at HOTR London. For more information, visit our website on HOTR.org.uk.